Hi, it's the Common Magician with a, a bit of a talk, a bit of a rant here uh, today. Um, something that I see a lot, especially on the things that I post, uh, and, and I see it elsewhere too, but um, I'll get to why I see it on the things I post here in a moment. Uh, one comment that comes up, and it's it's almost always with the same couple of slights uh, that I that I employ, and it usually happens with a zero shuffle. Uh, the comment is, "You're flashing that zero shuffle," and uh, I want to talk briefly about flashing. What's the deal with flashing, um, and and why what those people are referring to isn't flashing at all, and why it really isn't an issue just isn't really an issue. Um, there are two different things that I think are confused as the same thing. Uh, there's flashing, and flashing really is, uh, from, at least in my point of view, again, this is my opinion, but flashing is the, uh, the the dirty work that's going on behind the scenes where something is out of place, uh, is seen, and it's not supposed to be. It's not supposed to be seen. Um for example, if I was palming a card and I have windows in between my fingers uh, and you see the card, that's flashing, right? If I'm doing some kind of coin vanish and the coin is seen in the other hand, right, that is flashing. Uh, it's showing something that isn't supposed to be seen. Now, that's different from showing something that isn't supposed to be noticed, right? So if you think about it in terms of camouflage, what is the purpose of camouflage? That is, right, the kind of uh, a natural dressing that an animal might have in its natural environment that would protect it from predators, or uh, it's a, a type of garb and outfit that uh, a person would wear when they're hunting or in, uh, in a military combat, or it's the kind of paint uh, uh, facade, the paint job that would be put on some kind of military vehicle uh, to make it go un, unnoticed. Um, what you're looking at with camouflage is something that is supposed to be seen, but is not supposed to be noticed, right? It's supposed to be seen, but it is not supposed to be noticed. And we have a lot of that in magic. And it's not flashing. That's not, we're not talking about flashing in those cases, because if you know the camouflage, you see it, right? If you know that it's there, then you will see it, guaranteed. Uh, they, these things rely on a lack of information on the part of the spectator. The spectator is not supposed to know what is there to be noticed, even though they see it, even though they are looking directly at the thing that's going on. Um, and these are, these are, this is not flashing. This is some, this is a different category. These are tells. These are tells. So you have flashing and then you have tells. Flashing is when something is done covertly and it's done poorly in such a way that the covert thing can be uh, seen and noticed. And then uh, tells are things that are, are required in order to do the thing. Um, and they are seen. They're seen by everybody, uh, but they're not supposed to be noticed. And they depend on a lack of awareness and information concerning the actual occurrence that is happening. OK, um, and magicians deal with this all the time. Uh, the various slights have a, a large number of tells that broadcast what they are. Um, I, I got uh, a called out one time uh, for an overhand jog shuffle uh, saying, you know, you're, I can see you jogging that card. And I say, I don't care. I don't care if you see me jogging the card because the, the jog is a tell. It's not a flash. It's not indicating what I'm doing. Jogs happen naturally in an overhand shuffle done by the average person. So a person could shuffle overhand and stop and jog a card by an inch, and it really wouldn't matter because it doesn't necessarily indicate something is happening. Uh, it is merely a tell that this thing could be happening, and you would only know if you knew about the thing. If that makes sense. So um, now with the zero shuffle, the problem with that is that it's got huge tells. It's it's if you know about a zero shuffle, anybody that knows the zero shuffle will see it. And I argue this: Herb Zero obviously uh, is the man that invented it. Herb Zero, and he's he's a uh, uh, long gone now. But um, he tells the story in his video. Uh, Herb Zero on the Zero Shuffle, which is where people uh, learn this. Most of you know, people like you and me learned it for the first time. 
um, he he talks about showing it to Di Vernon and and he did it for Vernon. He showed he shows on the video what he did exactly. And Vernon couldn't see it. He said, I don't understand what's going on. I don't I don't see it. Right. And then he, of course, explained it to him. But the problem is, is that once you know what the zero shuffle is, you watch him show that and you think, well, how could he not see it? Right. Well, Vernon did see it. He just didn't notice it. He didn't understand it. He didn't comprehend it. The only problem with the zero shuffle is, is the same is the same point I made on the uh, Erdene's bottom deal. The only problem with it is that ever is that people know it. That's it. And a lot of people who don't use it know it. And just because they don't use it and aren't comfortable and aren't they don't personally feel con competent or confident to use it, uh, both of those things, um, they still see it. They still know that it's there and they still notice it. Uh, so that's it. That's the only thing wrong with the zero shuffle. And and that's not going to stop me from doing it because I'm not performing for you, right? If I'm performing for you using a zero shuffle, it is just because I'm demonstrating the use of it. And I darn well know that you see it if you know that it's there. I don't, <laughs> I'm not trying to uh, deceive you, at least not in that regard. Um, if I wanted to deceive magicians, I wouldn't use a zero shuffle at all. I would do some other things. And you can see, you know, things I've posted that I'm specifically trying to be deceptive. And, you know, I don't go there. I don't I don't try to, to use that particular slight. I do want to talk a bit about it, though, because I think there are some things about the zero shuffle that we can accept. And if if we just did the common magicians out there, which is what this channel is for, would use it more you would be more confident and you would quickly become more competent in using it. And that's my interest. So let's talk about the zero shuffle and, you know, what's the deal with, with flashing and tells and, and why a lot of it doesn't matter and why you should just use it anyway. Okay. So uh, let's, let's look a little bit at the history first. First of all, the history, as I said, uh, is created by a uh, herb zero. A number of people uh, claim that, it is the one of the very few card slates created by a magician for the purposes of doing magic uh, that made its way into uh, gambling, made it into card cheating. I don't know the validity of that. It's a really good story. It brings a lot of uh, interest and intrigue into it uh, for sure. Uh, I don't doubt that at all. Um, and and you got to ask yourself, considering the context of this, is that if it was c considered sufficient enough for what it is, to be brought into a uh, an arena that is violent and dangerous, right? Card cheating. Um, it must be good enough, right? Even even if it is what it is, even 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 with its tells. So keep that in mind that a zero shuffle done bare bones vanilla garden variety is good enough, I think, to cheat at cards you know, in, in reality. And I'll say this, I've done zero shuffles in front of uh, people that, that I know. They're not magicians. They don't do card magic. They don't know anything about the slights, but they know that I do it. Uh, and they've never, they've never called me out on it, ever. I mean, ever. The only people that have ever noticed a zero shuffle is someone who knows the zero shuffle. I've, I've never had somebody else, and I do a lot of them, I've never had somebody else uh, notice it. Um, I do an ace cutting thing, and I recently posted a, a, another video on that. Um, impromptu card cutting, uh, uh, dead cutting, uh, using a riffle call and uh, blocking off using a zero shuffle. And then, of course, uh, a, a crimping method, an impromptu crimping method to do dead cutting. And I've done this for family members and friends who know I do magic. And and the closest anybody ever got is that they presumed that I might be peeking on the riffle, that somehow when I'm riffling, I'm catching a glimpse of some cards. Uh, and that's the closest that that one person ever got is my brother-in-law, you know, a family member who's seen me do a lot of stuff. Um, and, and that's the best he could do in spite of the fact that I'm doing zero shuffle after zero shuffle after zero shuffle, just as you see in my videos, he doesn't see it. He just doesn't, he doesn't know. He doesn't know that it's there. To him, I'm shuffling the cards and he can't get past uh, just that one suspicion. So, um, you know, it, it, just because you see it doesn't mean you notice it. It's, it's, a, it's a form of a kind of uh, deceptive camouflage that is supposed to be on full display um, for what it is. Now, 
let's uh, uh, talk a little bit more about history. If you want to learn the Zero Shuffle from a, a good resource, uh, besides Herb Zero on the Zero Shuffle, his his video, which you can get, uh, Jason England also uh, does a very nice video on the Zero Shuffle. It's not very long. Uh, he hits it kind of head on, straight on for what it is. Uh, and I think it was his Foundations series that he did a number of years ago. So, uh, and it's taught by a million other people. You can find, you know, YouTube videos, you know, that teach it adequately so for sure. You know, um, now let's talk about a couple of other people. I, I, two people come to mind uh, when we think about uh, making improvements on the Zero Shuffle and why they are great improvements and why they're not really at all. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. The first person I uh, comes to mind uh, uh, when I think about the zero shuffle and making it deceptive is uh, Doug Edwards has a video. Uh, I think Vanishing Inc. I think has it uh, where he goes over uh, a zero shuffle that has a sort of cover um, that makes it look, as they claim, uh, absolutely true. Right. It completely covers up the tells that we know of the zero shuffle. Now, um, I'll come back to that in a moment. The other person I'm thinking of is Steve Reynolds, and people like to, to bring up Steve Reynolds when talking about the Zero Shuffle. I first became aware of his Zero Shuffle and his Penguin Live um, from a long time ago. He did a Penguin Live uh, lecture, and he, he covered the Zero in that. Uh, and he's done a number of DVDs or video series after that uh, that... Really, it's the same coverage, and it goes a little bit more in-depth, a few more details. Uh, but uh, some people bring up these people, and there's some others, too, I know, when they're saying, well, it can be done perfectly. Well, here's a problem. Let's go back to Doug Edwards. He he has this way of doing it that does look really good. I mean, if you look at the just look at the trailer, uh, and he's very open in the ad copy and in the trailer about what he's doing. He talks openly about what it is. So... Uh, he's exposing the, the method, really, just in the conversation in the trailer. He uses a cover card, but the uh, a bend in the cover card, single cover card. The problem, though, is that for removing the tells that are on the zero, he adds a whole handful of other tells, right? So if you know Doug Edwards' zero shuffle, then you know you know what it is, right? He's doing things that make the shuffle look uncommon uh, as we normally would know a shuffle. This is in stack. Uh, this is not. We know a zero shot. We know we know a shuffle, right, to look like that. The cards are riffled together and then they are they're squared up. So that's a that's a shuffle. Uh, a zero shuffle. Uh, we know to look like this, where you you riffle true, and then you kind of stuff in this packet underneath the, a, a cover card or cards, and then over the bottom. And uh, I displace one card here. Normally, you might uh, slip cut a card, right, and do the same thing. And it's that that image right there in the front that you can see where you're stuffing in over top. And and the original zero really wasn't much more than that. Uh, there were a few things that Herb talks about in terms of doing it uh, where you can angle the cards a bit, which we'll talk about here in a minute, because uh, we're going to look at a way to make your zero look good, and you just pick pick an avenue, right? Um, another way to do it is to uh, slip cut uh, underneath a packet of cards, and then whenever you go together, you can... Uh, kind of interlace or weave these covers uh, as you put it together. And that makes it look really good too. And if you're just trying to, um, if you're just trying to maintain a stack, a full deck stack, that's perfectly good. The issue is, is that sometimes you need to use a zero for things other than that. You need to maintain a full stack, but you're also using it to do some other things, which is how I use it. I need to use it for other um, utilities other than just maintaining the stack which require me to do a single card cover. Um, so Steve Reynolds talks about uh, ways to make it look invisible. And some people say his looks invisible. I don't think it looks invisible. I think it looks really great. Uh, the things he adds onto it, I think, again, adds a number of tells that once you know his method, then you see it. You see it every time. You can't unsee it, right? And again, that's not the point. Steve Reynolds is not flashing when he does his. 
Uh, Doug Edwards is not flashing when he does his. Herb Zero is not flashing when he does his. Uh, they are using the appropriate camouflage that is on full display, and it ought to go unnoticed for those people who are unaware and not in the know. That's what camouflage does. It's on full display. It's there to be seen. But the lack of information, that discrepancy of understanding, that ignorance that's in there built in is what's supposed to provide the cover. Okay, So let's look at a zero shuffle in, in the common magician light and what can you do realistically to make it look good. The first thing you can do to realistically improve your zero shuffle and make it look good uh, better than just kind of the basic mechanics is number one, you know, get Doug Edwards' video or Steve Reynolds or somebody else who's come up with a novel idea. You can do that. If you do that, you will uh, come up with some uh, various methods that will uh, kind of take the general population understanding of the zero and put yourself into a different level if you just do that. So that's one thing. Now, assume you don't do that. What are some practical things that you can do that we can talk about here? Um so the first thing you can do is that if you just need to maintain a stack uh, is to use a small packet on the right-hand side. So when you take, assuming you're right-handed and you take off the uh, top packet to the right, use a small packet. Um, and also don't do the slip cut. So don't do a slip cut. Just take a small packet off to the right. By using a small packet, it's a smaller number of cards that you're going to be pushing in. And that is uh, uh, very helpful. Okay, so take a small packet. Um, and just by doing that, uh, you improve the image of it. Because when you, uh, when you do the typical uh, sort of uh, um, uh, spreading of the cards underneath the cover, you thin out an already small packet and it goes relatively unnoticed. Uh, so that's one thing you can do. Um, the second thing you can do is uh, try to do the zero shuffle in a two shuffle sequence. So if you're not going to do the slip cut, uh, that means you have to follow up with another zero. Now this is a big packet and I know it's a big packet, but it's also a big packet against a small packet. Right, A big packet against a small packet it doesn't have to be that the small packet is the one on top. It can be the one on the bottom. Uh, and if we do the same thing with the cover, and I held the break, by the way. When I did that, I held the break so that I could take the same packets apart. I have this one displaced card on here. Now, whenever I go to push in and I flatten this out again, because the packets are uh, not the same size, um, I, I give myself pretty good cover whenever I bring them together. Now all that's left, having held this break, is to do a, a, a real cut, and I've done it. If you do that one thing, avoid the slip cut, do a two-shuffle sequence holding breaks, and use a small packet on the first, and I'm talking like one quarter, less than a third, uh, if you use a small packet, you will improve it dramatically in terms of the um, camouflage. Okay, so just that one thing gets you gets you several miles down the road. Um, another thing is create cover. Create cover. So uh, one way to create cover, and if we just do a regular uh, zero, so half and half ish, and we'll do we'll just use one cover card here. Uh, and we'll do a two shuffle sequence. Whenever I go to put them together, I can get cover in a number of ways. One way I can get cover is by bringing my fingers out in front. If I just put my fingers in front whenever I bring them together, I've got good cover. Okay, I'm just I'm just going to deny access to the front of the deck. So if I do that, I've got good cover. I I do my cut and I'm good. Okay, so just cover it. Just cover it up. Honestly, uh, there's there's a shuffle there I've done on some videos before. I don't know if anybody even caught it out or anything, um, where you just take the top off, you weave, you give full coverage, and then you just put the top back on the bottom again. That handy little idea comes from uh, the old Weapons of the Card Shark videos, uh, Jeff Westmiller, you know, and people can feel differently about uh, uh, that kind of a, a site, but it does work. You know, I've done that for people and they don't, they don't know. As long as the acting is good and you, you cover the deck, uh, there's no reason why you even have to do that. Um, on that respect, I'll just say this. my <laughs> the, the false in the hands riffle shuffle that I do looks like this. This is, my, this is my false in the hands riffle shuffle. 
you know, I don't, I, I've, I know, I know the Heinstein shuffle. I've done the truffle shuffle, both of them, you know, the old one. And then the one that Carl Hein did again, the 2.0, uh, they're all great. You know, it's wonderful, but honestly, nobody, nobody's looking that close. Um, if you just, I just riffle the bottom packet and then I cover everything up and I riffle the top packet on, on top of the bottom packet. I make sure I cover everything up. And then I just spring spring the top packet back on the bottom packet. Right? The sound does all the work. That's the one I do. I've done it a million times. Nobody's ever called it out. Ever. Right? Uh, so um, you don't have to be so covert with some things. Right? Um, back, to, back to zero. So uh, if you give cover with fingers, right, you can, do a, you can get away with a lot. Uh, including not even doing a zero at all. Um, another way to get some cover, you can do an overhang. So uh, Herb Zero talks a little bit about this and some others have, have uh, dealt with it. Um, uh, there's two kinds of overhang you can think about. One is where you uh, riffle in uh, at an angle and then when you push together, you continue the angle so that you just push the cards together so they kind of go into an X formation. Uh, and then you square them up. So that's one. And of course, uh, I am in stack, so I need to finish this out. I don't know actually if I've ruined my stack yet. Nope, still in stack. Okay. Uh, so that's that's one. So just angle, angle the the square, and you give yourself cover. Um, another one is a right hand overhang, and this is the one that I do. It's just the one I'm I like. I I like this one more than any of the others. Uh, and I've got this one. This is from Damian Neiman. Uh, Fast Company, I think, was the video where I saw this one. Uh, so all he does is he takes the cards. He does a a kind of stark, slightly more stark uh, riffle like this. And then he just brings the right hand pack forward and then pushes it back square. And this does two things. It just covers up the front pretty good. Uh, and it also allows me to get it into the thumb break much more efficiently because I've got all that space in, in which to get my thumb in. And then you, of course, uh, like I'm doing it, I, I follow up with another one. So that's my shuffle. That's the one I do. That's the one you see me do. Uh, and some people obviously notice that I'm doing a zero when I do that because you know the zero shuffle. And if you go back and look, it's not really that you're seeing me shoving in. It's just that you know that I'm putting one packet over top of the other. You don't really get a good glimpse. I'm not saying you don't see anything, but when you do this, you don't you don't get a good glimpse of of what's happening down here like you would back here. Like if I'm back here, you can really see that moment. But if I'm up here and I push it in, you don't you don't really get much of an opportunity. Okay? So this is this is the one that I have uh, I have defaulted to. That's the one I like. I don't care if you don't like it. I like it, right? And again, nobody's ever called me out for it that doesn't know the zero shuffle. So the other one you can do uh, to give some cover is the uneven square we talked about earlier, and that is uh, where you take the cards, you riffle, and then you just you just vary an uneven way. You just push in a taper of cards. And, and shove them together like this. This looks extremely dirty. This is what a lot of people do. But I'll tell you what, if they don't, you know, if your spectators don't know that there's a zero shuffle, that looks good. It looks really good to them. It doesn't look like a really clean shuffle to people that are very particular on nice, clean casino shuffles. But it does look like a good, messy shuffle. It looks like the cards are getting shuffled really well. So a lot of people do it that way. Bill Malone, you know, at least on his older material, used to do uh, a shuffle more like that. He would take the cards and uh, he would slip cut. I didn't do one there. But he would give a lot of hand coverage. So he'd take, there's another way to cover, is take the left hand over here, and then you do the taper and just kind of collect everything in together, right? So... Um, that looks really good. It looks, you know, some people shuffle that way. And if you are motivated when you do it, it looks pretty good. So just cover it up, Co cover it using one of these methods. I've, I've shown you my, my favorite one, that right hand overhang. Um, another way, another way is to slip cut a packet, slip cut a packet. So if you take a small packet and then slip cut out. And again, it's better if you slip cut a small section 
Uh, and here, this is a single shuffle. You only have to do one. And then you shuffle in, and then you use uh, any one of those other methods, any one of those other methods that we talked about. Uh, and then you just shuffle together. You, what you end up having is you have a, a tapered packet here, but you also have a tapered packet up here. And that gives some really good cover to it. So uh, it covers up the, uh, the shuffle quite nicely when you do that. Uh, so just placed one card there. Um, so let's talk a little bit about some philosophical things here uh, as I send you on your way. The first thing I want to say uh, philosophically is that uh, card magic, table card magic, has no good angles. Table card magic has no good angles, right? When you're dealing out of the hands and you're working with spectators in a, in a dynamic environment, you can really consider angles because you have the ability to shift your body and you can always present the best angle. Card magic at a table is uh, under the sort of uh, pretext that you would be uh, uh, surrounded, not behind, right? But that someone would be sitting right next to you on either side, either at, at the 90 degree or even right next to you right here. And they have some, some view, even, even at a very sharp back angle. Um, and then people would be sitting at, a, at, at the full, you know, 180 to 360 degrees all the way around the table, and they'd be able to see everything. They're also sitting at a varying heights. Tall people sit tall, short people sit short. They can see right down on the deck, you know, they can see the, they can see head on uh, in some places. The Zero Shuffle was made for that environment. Um, there's no good angles. There's no good way to present the zero shuffle such that you give the best angle. Uh, so flashing goes out the window. We're dealing with tells. That's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with uh, a, a smaller information gap, which gives it away. If someone knows that it's there, they obviously can see it. But if they know that it's there, then they can understand it. They can notice it. That's the issue. Uh, so what's the deal with flashing? Well, you're misusing the term. You just are, right? Uh, you're not flashing when you do a zero shuffle and someone can see that it's a zero shuffle. Um, that, that's not what flashing really is. You're, you're flashing when you, uh, you know, this is, this is flashing. Right? This is flashing. That's flashing, right? That's a that's a bad strip cut because I didn't put the speed into it, right? You can see that I'm pulling a group out uh, from it. It's not done well, right? Um, you know, as opposed to uh, as opposed to doing it properly. Now, by the way, there's tells, right? Whenever I do a a uh, push through shuffle, there are tells with it, right? That that thing right there that I just did, and then the fact that you uh, kind of cut that way that. That, that tells immediately that there's a strip cut going on. And if you know strip cuts, you, you see that happen. Um, flashing is whenever you're showing something that isn't supposed to be seen and understood, and you make it both. It's seen and it is understood. Can you flash on a zero? Yeah, I think you can, right? Uh, if, I, if I do this and I, you know, do that... <laughs> If if I if I allow people to sit there and look at the situation, you know that's obviously flashing. But that's not even that's not even how how you shuffle. Even if you did it badly, um, just the mere motion of putting the cards together. Even if even if you see all those tells going on, a person w with the information gap doesn't know. They don't know what's going on. They think they think you just put the cards together. That one cover card gets you a long way. You know, that, that one card on top really muddles up the picture uh, for most people. So um, practice your zero shuffle. Investigate ways to do it. Pick one that you like, that you're comfortable with, and use the darn thing. Use it. Put it to use uh, because no one's going to see it. Magicians are going to see it. Magicians are going to see it, and they're going to bust on you all the time for seeing it. 
Okay. But uh, in terms of application, uh, the people that are in that information gap, they're not going to see it. Uh, a lot of people, I, I look, I guarantee you, I've never, I haven't seen Herb Zero do every Zero Shuffle he ever did. But I promise you that every Zero Shuffle that Herb Zero ever did could be identified as a Zero Shuffle by someone who knows it. I guarantee it. I'm confident in that, right? Um also, keep in mind that uh, uh, very, very good magicians, when you look at their real professional sets, uh, the shows that they do, Magic Castle sets that they do, or other professional venues, you can go find videos of people doing uh, table card magic. Uh, you will always see the moment they do their zero, and so many uh, uh, card magicians will employ a zero shuffle in their set, even though they know that magicians will see it. And why? Because they're not stupid. They're not stupid. They know how to do it. It's surefire. It passes muster. Uh, the people in the information gap don't see it. And it's just a guarantee win, right? They guarantee that they win whenever they whenever they use that. So they're going to do it. Um, likewise, on their social media, they're not going to do it when they're trying to fool magicians. They're going to do something else. Okay. So anyway, <sighs> what's the deal with flashing? That's the deal with flashing. Good luck with that. Happy magicking.